Welcome to Four Culture, exploring the richness of culture in our community through arts, heritage, preservation, and public art. My name is Vaughn Raymond. I'm a Seattle filmmaker and a local history buff. I love history most when it's living history and part of our world today. And that is definitely true of the Ballard Locks and the Lake Washington Ship Canal, which are turning 100 years old in 2017. I've been producing a series of documentaries for their centennial, and I've learned that there are a lot of other things that grew up around the locks and the canal that are also very old and also very much alive. A beautiful example of this is the uh, fleet of wooden fishing boats that were actually built before the locks and, amazingly enough, are not only alive and well, but actually go out through the Ballard Locks every spring to do commercial fishing in the Bering Sea. For every single one of the hundred years that the locks have been operating, these boats have been doing that. I decided to produce a mini documentary about one of these boats. Her name is Vancy, and I think that both she and her skipper, Per Odegaard, can teach us a thing or two about history, tradition, and making good use of what we already have as we move into the future. The Vancy is a traditional halibut schooner that was built in 1913 here in Seattle. And it is consistently fished for uh, halibut since the day it was built. It has never missed a season, and it continues to be an active and very productive boat in the long line halibut and sablefish fishery. The Vancy and all the similar vessels around here started using the locks shortly after they were built, 100 years ago. Without the locks, we wouldn't have this fishing fleet you see here. So the ship canal and the locks has been really instrumental in helping develop and maintain the commercial fishing industry in the Seattle area. See, I was born on uh, Hitchrup right here, island off the west coast of Norway. My name is Per Odegaard, and I'm a commercial halibut fisherman, as well as a, uh, as a black-eyed fisherman. Okay, here we have the, uh, the Vance and the Polaris when they were uh, built. The Vance was built in 1913 by a builder called John Strand. It was built outside the locks, not too far from where Ray's Boathouse is right now. The name Vance comes from a community in southern Norway called Vance Commune. The original owner came from uh, Vance, Norway. When it was originally built, it was built for dory fishing. It carried six dories with a crew of 15 men. It was two men per dory, but dory fishing was basically outlawed in the 1930s because it was so dangerous. The loss of life was tremendous, as you can imagine, these 17-foot boats out in the middle of the ocean. In the 1930s, they developed technology to haul and set from the schooner itself, where you had a, a girdy, which is just a power winch, which was mechanically driven that you could use to, to retrieve the gear with. And the gear is a traditional long line gear, which is a line about the diameter of your finger with hook space every 18 feet or so, and the gear is anchored to the bottom. I started fishing with my father. We bought in this boat in 1960. It was an old boat when he bought into it. And uh, you know, from high school on, this was you know the family farm. I went and worked on the family farm. And this is how the family made their living. Our normal cycle of activity is we leave Seattle around the 1st of April, head up to Alaska, stop in Ketchikan and get our ice and bait. Then we start fishing in southeast Alaska and work our way up into the Gulf of Alaska and then on into Bering Sea and through Bering Sea out the Aleutian Islands. And then we work our way back again to where, where our last trip is for Halibut and that's in the Gulf of Alaska. And we run that last trip down to Bellingham to load. Let's uh, step aboard here and I give you the tour. Take a look up here. 
this would be the pilot house and of course you know over the years electronics have become the big thing we have two depth sounders single sideband radio navigation computers satellite telephone kind of goes on and on radars but uh, this is what's normal on boats nowadays this would be the fish hold down here we pack 95,000 pounds of ice halibut, 10 tons of ice and 95,000 pounds of halibut. That's what we carry. We're heading to the forecastle. Hey, you making coffee? This is my son, Nils. <laughs> he is the next generation of fishermen on the Vancey. Now this is a traditional forecastle. Forecastle is actually abbreviation for forward castle. Right, we got eight bunks. There used to be 10 bunks here when we had 15 men in the old days originally. And you needed all those bunks. Well, I've been asked why I don't get rid of this old wooden boat and buy a steel boat. Part of it is the cost. To build a new boat capable of doing what this does right now is, is $4 million. As you look at these old wooden boats, you have to realize how sustainable they are. They've lasted 100 years, and you're not gonna get a steel boat that's gonna last 100 years. We live in such a disposable society where nobody can fix anything. I mean, is there a TV repairman anymore? <laughs> I don't know, I haven't seen one. <laughs> it's better to reuse and to recycle, and see, you can do things yourself on, on a wood boat, which are difficult to do on a steel boat. These boats here, especially in this port, they can be repaired. They can be maintained, and you can get a lot of use from them. As you look at this 100-year-old boat and 100-year-old locks, you realize that they're both important to each other. When the locks were built here, they facilitated this port, made it what it is, because the locks give us access to fresh water, which is the important factor in maintaining these vessels and maintaining the longevity because of the marine growth, boring worms, these type of things. They don't live in fresh water. So it's just added tremendously longevity of not only this vessel, but vessels made of steel as well. A large portion of the fleet that fish in Alaska are home ported in Seattle because of the goods and services that are available here. And also the climate is a little more conducive to getting work done here than it is in Alaska. The goods and services that are available here are instrumental in keeping the fleet here. That's why a working waterfront is so important to the fishing industry and to Seattle. When you leave Seattle to head out to the grounds and you go down the locks, there's always kind of a sinking feeling as you go down. And then as you pass out, as Iron Gates closes behind you and you go, oh boy, this is it. You know what's in store for you. You're heading out the ocean. But when you come home, it's a different story. You, you enter the locks, and as the locks fill up, the level of the boat rises. So your motions tend to rise with that, because <laughs> you know it, it's over, and you're coming home. 